Hey everyone, welcome back to another video uh, by popular demand. Everybody wanted to uh, see how the structures were built. So I figured I'd do another video. Before I get started, I want to say thanks for everybody liking, subscribing, and sharing. Um, it's been crazy cloudy here as the Canadian smokes are back here again. So I figure I'd do that. Life's been crazy, a bit busy, trying to get a lot of projects done. Got a lot of progress on that. Uh, I'll try to do some videos on that. Um, got a lot of things going. So let's get back to this uh, structure here. That's the pool house or pool shed, or whatever you're gonna call it, with the greenhouse to your left and pool house to the right. So the way this was built uh, a while back, uh, the intended purpose so for this particular structure was to have a roof over this edge and everything else blank so I can put these panels up because uh, all I want is shade, somewhat water not come through. So the way this was built, it's your standard uh, six by six post, uh, four feet in the ground. Uh, the pitch of this roof, I end up doing about 30 degree-ish as close as I could with the highest pitch possible, not being too high so I can clean it because I know with all these trees, as you can see, I was gonna have to uh, clean a lot, do the pollen and, and you know leaves falling and, and just, just the way things work out. So the reason the pitch is high, this is facing south, um, south to being the opposite direction. Uh, it's late in the evening, you can see the sun up there. Um, this gets suns right around one o'clock till about five. So these trees kind of block the morning sun here. And uh, this is pretty standard building practice. So you got joists here, you got center, uh, 24 center running. And uh, typically, uh, these are 24 center. Typically you have a plywood locking all this structure to make a perfect square so it doesn't move left or right and keeps it square. So that particular spot where the roof is, that does that because I have a plywood, the standard, you know, a shed construction you want to call it or a house construction. For this, what I end up doing, you see these here, this was a temporary lock so they don't move side to side. There's a beams there that support each corner. And then uh, that two by four is rain everywhere. Uh, there's a rail that needs to be run that levels the roof over there. And on top of that, with the uh, super strut, uh, that kind of ties everything together. And it's easy, it's like a railing system. You slide it, the panel from one end to another or you know whichever way you want to run out or you can just pull them right out. So for that, I don't need it to do top bolts or center bolts to hold the panels together. So if I bring you out here again, you can see all of these panels, they don't have center mounts because I'm, I'm mounting from underneath, I can slide them and I have access to all of that from underneath if I need to rewire anything or do anything else. And if you look on the roof side right there, I have a washer with a, 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 a nut that holds it down in the super strut. So same railing goes all the way through, there's two sets of it and that covers it up. And in between each panel to block from a little bit of wire going through because you still have some room here and also on the other end where the some water can get in. But to seal the top off, I ran a bead of silicone in between and I butted them together so that kind of tightens it up. It's not perfect waterproof, but it's enough to where not much water comes through this. And you know, for the greenhouse, I end up doing a second roof underneath with the uh, some plexi uh, glass kind of thing. So that way it keeps the heat in, in, in the roof itself. So this is complete about 12 kilowatt. Combined system is about 17 and a half. And a typical day production, sunny, I'll get anywhere from 60, 70, 75 kilowatts a day. Depends on how much sun I get. Uh, rainy days, anywhere from 15 to 25 kilowatts. Uh, that's cloudy, rain all day pretty much. So the system is doing pretty good. Next, I'll take you into the carport. So hold on tight for that. So now we're looking at the, the carport structure that I built. This was built during uh, COVID, so all I wanted to do is as little as lumber possible because the lumber was quite expensive and I wanted to try out uh, the cheap material or cheapest I could build this thing. So it didn't take that much to build it. So the beams here, the pitch, the way this face faces east, so it captures the morning sun. And as you can see, it's about almost four o'clock and it's still getting sun on it during summer. And um, so this pretty much produces everything, you know, all day long. And these being the uh, low ENN panels, they pretty much produce all day. 
And the nice thing about these with the lower pitch, um, I can capture the sun all day. If I had a higher pitch, typically you want a 25 to 30 degree pitch. Uh, with that, uh, I wouldn't capture as much sun. So this covers that and this whole panel set here, including the fence on the side, uh, it's 5,500 watts. I'm seeing anywhere from four to 4,500 watts average out of it, which is still not bad considering the situation it's in. And having the low pitch, again, I can get on top of the carport there and um, or, or the top of the deck on the car um, on the garage and I can just clean this panel I knew as again with all these trees I have to clean them often um, we got a lot of storms here and a lot of dust and everything else in between so the way this structure is laid out so the garage is about 25 feet so I divided those by four so six by six four feet in the ground again and uh, um, you can see the quality of the lumber that six by six kind of look crappy uh, it's just COVID there was no um, perfect uh, material and it wasn't cheap either so with that what I did is same six by six uh, they're about eight foot in center I just divided them by four on both hands um, and then wherever there's a two by four landed I end up doing two by twelve to lock them in place from inside to inside uh, you see the portion right there so if you follow that long It'll get into that end and locks into the inside of the six by six there and then of course i got a double header uh two by twelves running uh on both sides top top header there top header there that locks in side to side motion and this header locks in this motion and then in between to fill the you know typically you would have a roof come down this way but um, since i've rising the panel that way i locked in these with uh, your standard Two, uh, two by four. This is all treated material and they're all 24 center. Uh, so that locks the whole structure in place. And then I ran uh, the Superstrut, uh, which you can check out as um, Home Slow Depot, any, pretty, pretty much any hardware carries it. And this is the heavier version, so it's a thicker. Um, it's about an inch and a half and they make all different type adapters, railings, screws, and whatever you, you know, you can imagine whatever you want. Uh, similar to the 8020, but it's cheaper. It's aluminum, uh, it's a, instead of aluminum, it's galvanized. Uh, so I'm running screws in that same concept. I can slide the panel here or up top and just slide them in and out. So they're just a railing system and I put them wherever there was a, a screw. In this case, there's one right there and there's a one right there. And for the length of it, they come in 10 feet and I end up welded them together for the length I needed. And I believe this is about 17 feet total. Um, I wanted enough space to park two things side by side. Uh, typically I had a boat here and then a tractor side to it. And uh, right now I sold a boat so that these two things sit here. So this provides perfect. Uh, only thing I didn't do this for this particular structure is I didn't put any silicone in between the panels. Uh, wasn't thinking that far out yet. And uh, so I do get some rain come in, which is not bad, but overall uh, this protects it from shade and all that. And if I had to redo it again, they make a T-slot uh, fitting for these uh, or T-slot gasket. So it literally looks like a T. Uh, you can get them in a half inch, three quarter inch or one inch. And I would slide one of those in between each panel. Uh, uh, they also come with the glue on it. So if you seal those out, then you'll have perfectly sealed um, the whole roof in it. And uh, with this, the system works out great. Um, it provides the shade, as you can see. It's a sunny out and uh, it protects the garage from getting beaten up early in the morning. Um, and and it's, it's, it does what it needs to do, basically produce electricity. Uh, we had a few snows on it and so far it's holding up. It's not leaning weird or uh, crooked or whatnot. It, it held up. Uh, so it's, it's a simple construction, it's, it's cheaper materials. Uh, instead of running a bunch of, you know, either 24 center, you run six by sixes. Uh, this will work because the super start welded together as a one piece. Uh, it supports it and the panel's not heavy enough to push it down or whatnot. Um, with that paused, I'll show you the next, uh, which is the railing for the rest of the material. So now you join me on top of the garage looking down on the solar panel. So uh, I'm standing right here. This is about four feet from the bottom of the floor to the roof here. And you can just see the super start just sliding bolts here, uh, nuts here. And then I just have a bolt going from that end and then I just use a, 
uh, you know, socket to, or Allen key to tighten it out. Uh, that kind of, what that looks like. And as far as the panels go, there's your panels back end. That's, uh, I'll give you a view here. That's what the face of the panels look like. They're pretty much glass. You can kind of see what, um, you can see yourself. This is great area. Uh, wife loves doing yoga here in the morning. Um, so here the railing worked out pretty simple. I made, basically made um, 90 degree bracket with supporting end, use a anchor screws here. This could work on the same, you know, deck also. And then I have the same super strut row going across. And basically these are not welded together because uh, I wanted to be able to take this stuff out in case I need to take the hot tub, which is right here out or bring anything big as I have French doors there into the second floor. I can just bring it to the top of the deck here. And as for the wiring goes, I you could run these through the super strut and kind of hide them all out so they're a bit safe. I like it this way because nobody comes here. This is to me safe enough and nobody's going to touch any of this stuff. We don't have kids around or we don't have any kids. Um, so this kind of gives you the privacy of a deck railing and at the same time it's generating electricity. So this is the overview. So this whole uh, uh, car garage is about two car garage, uh, maybe five feet extra on each end. So that kind of where it looks like. From here, I can overview the whole, uh, there's your fence, it's on both sides. We just have a cover here, privacy cover, uh, just to protect it from that end. Nobody comes around here. And then on this, you have the pool view overlooking the, the next structure over there with the rest of the solar. Uh, hopefully that's helped somebody out. Uh, again, if you have more question on how to use a super strut or how to wire any of this up, uh, it's pretty easy. Well, it's easy once you figure out, you know, what exactly you're going to do, what kind of strings you're going to run, what kind of panel you're going to run. Uh, highly recommend using Superstrut instead of buying proprietary railing system and all that. You can do so much with this. Uh, it's very sturdy. I mean, this stuff doesn't move. This is solid galvanized, um, and you can secure it um, pretty much with any structure. I mean, people hang AC units with it or furnaces. Uh, we hang pretty much any wiring, heavy-duty plumbing, all that stuff that so easy to work with easy to cut i mean it's just metal so just needed some kind of sort of jigsaw or anything that um so on that note hopefully you like these videos like subscribe and share and if you have any questions please leave in the comment i'll do more details if that's what you guys uh, want on this uh sorry you've been busy but uh have a great one enjoy life